Hello, we're going to talk about Azure SQL Database Hyperscale. Now, I don't know about you, but when you have the word hyper in your name, hyperscale specifically, that's kind of a big deal. It's a bold claim. It's um, you're, you're, you're indicating that there's something pretty amazing going on. So let's look at the facts and see what we think about Azure Hyperscale Database. Well, for starters, it supports databases up to 100 terabytes. In fact, that's what Microsoft has tested it with, but there's no actual reason you couldn't go bigger. So at least 100 terabytes and actually uh, very possibly larger than that. There's no size of data operations. What do I mean by that? So typically as your database grows, it gets harder and harder to back that up. Like if you had a 50 terabyte database, it might take you days to back that up. Um, it really doesn't matter if your database is a terabyte or 100 terabytes. It's very quick to back it up. In fact, the demo I saw, it took just a few minutes to back up a 50 terabyte database. Um, and also these backups have zero performance impact. Um, so that's a great feature. Restores are extremely fast. Once again, uh, up to our second bullet point there, restores, it's not based on the size of your data. Uh, they stay extremely fast. Also, if you need uh, to be able to scale up your, your compute or your storage, you can do that in minutes. It doesn't take hours. So a little bit more about Hyperscale. It's an all new storage layer underneath the database. This has been completely redesigned. It's been architected for the cloud um, and it's fully compatible with Azure SQL Database. So if you're currently using that, um, the syntax, the features in there, it's completely compatible with that. So VLDB, very large database, without the VLDB headaches. So how is this all accomplished? Well, the, the compute and the storage have been physically split out and we're able to scale out, not necessarily up, you can scale up the node sizes, but you can also scale out the compute and the storage. Uh, and yet, on top of that, we're still maintaining the query engine for 100% compatibility. So you don't have to think about different syntax, doing things differently. You do them the same way that you're doing them now. So I'm gonna get into a diagram, but at a high level, these are the components. You have the compute or the query engine. You have page servers that deal with your data. You have the log service that are, is handling all your logs and, and then uh, what the logs do to keep uh, the page servers up to date and the cache up to date. And of course, remote storage. So here is a diagram that I'm gonna spend some time going through. All right, as I mentioned before, you have your compute servers up top here. So you have your primary compute server that's handling your reads and writes, but then you can scale out your reads um, to these secondaries. In fact, uh, you can have up to 15 of these. So similar to always on availability groups, which has you know, eight, and then depending if you do distributed availability groups, you can get more, but this has up to 15 uh, uh, compute uh, read-only servers available to you, but that's completely separated from the actual page servers. And each one of these page servers holds a terabyte of data. And you can see the yellow boxes here. That's local SSD cache, uh, also known as our resilient buffer pool extensions. But suffice it to say, it holds as much data in cache as possible, so it doesn't actually have to hit the disks in the back end. Um, but another thing in this picture, you'll notice we have copies of these page servers, each one of them. So for every one terabyte page server, you have a copy of that. So you have HA high availability built right into the setup here. Now, on your right, you have your log service. So what happens when uh, the writes are happening to your primary compute node here, all, all the logs land here in, in a very high performing Azure premium storage area. And this is where your log service is gonna apply this to the cache or to the page servers down here. But then also what we do is we'll destage these logs, put them into uh, standard storage here for PITR or point in time recovery. I think right now it goes back six months and that's all built in for you. You don't have to think about 
uh, setting up a job to back up your logs, that's all being handled for you so that you can go back uh, point in time at any particular minute or second for that uh, matter and restore your database if you need to do that. Okay, so a little bit more about the page servers. Each one, once again, is responsible for one terabyte worth of data. It has redundancy in that there's a second server with a copy of that. And typically the data you need is writing cache here because it, it does have a terabyte down here on, on the actual blob storage, but that should be cached here. Also up here, I mentioned that you could have up to 15 of these secondaries, but this all this has to do is worry about compute. When it needs data, it'll go down to a page server and it can do that easily uh, via the page ID. Page ID is just a composite of file ID and then the page number within the file. So the compute servers know which page server to go to. Now let's say your database grows larger, like in this diagram, uh, it's a three terabyte one. If you need a fourth or a fifth and you know up to a hundred plus um, in the background, uh, another page server will be spun up with its redundant copy and your database will grow without impacting any of these other page servers. And then lastly, down here in the blob storage, in the background, um, we're taking backups. Microsoft takes file snapshot backups, which are really quick uh, copies of the data that's not gonna affect any of the performance of what's going on in the query engine and the page servers. Hey, so thanks very much for spending a few minutes with me going over uh, Azure SQL DB Hyperscale.